So, um, well, um, it's a very sad occasion to have to basically make an obituary for someone who I know well, or knew well, rather. Uh, Jopolczynski passed away technically yesterday, I think, uh, from the point of view of here. Uh, um, uh, uh, he had brain cancer, and I think there were complications at some point. And I don't know the full details because I only got the official version from the university, so I don't know what happened exactly at the end. Um, but I was asked to basically talk a little bit about Joe. And basically, my feeling is that he was undoubtedly one of the giants of physics, and it's a very sad loss for our field. Um, he had become less active, obviously, in the last year or so, but he was still talking to people and he was still interested in the research. Uh, he said that upon retiring about a year ago that he had achieved his lifetime goal of becoming a postdoc again. So that was how, how he viewed his role, is that he wanted to keep on doing research all the way to the end. Um, his CV basically is, he got his PhD from Berkeley, his advisor was Stanley Mandelson, um, he was a postdoc at Harvard and Slack, and he became a professor at UT Austin. And when I went for my PhD at UT Austin, I thought he was still there and he had just left. And so I missed him that time. Uh, but then he was at the UCSB KTP since then. He won many, 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 many prizes. So got the Hertz Fellowship and AP Sloan Fellowship. He's a fellow of the APS, AAAS, National Academy of Science. He got the Danny Heinemann Prize from the APS for theoretical physics, the Dirac Medal. And then he got the Physics Frontiers and the Breakthrough Prize. And these are basically a few of the things that he got to indicate how precious he was to us and all the work he did. Um, I tried to understand what his physics was quickly, um, and it's a lot. Um, he worked on the normalization group. There's a Polshinsky normalization group uh, uh, story. He invented D brains by studying T duality and studied other dualities in string theory. Uh, he also did the GKP paper, which is the Giddings Kashu Polchinski. And for a while, GKP was also the Gulzar Klebanov Polyakov paper. So when you say GKP, I mean, you're in the wrong conference, they think you're talking about something different. And this was basically some of the birth of what we call the landscape nowadays. Um, he studied superstring integrability with rather Royban. They discovered that the string sigma model, maybe it's five crosses five, was basically integrable. Uh, then he talked about firewalls. Um, I have a story about that, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, and then more recently he was doing SYK. But this is in some sense a sample of what he has done, just off the top of my head. But he's done many, 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 many more other things. Uh, this is just a little bit. And, you know, uh, all of this stuff, basically, is from when I was a physicist, and D-brains were kind of slightly before. Um, uh, I started my PhD when this paper arrived, so I kind of started doing D-brains as soon as they came out. But D-brains were a little bit older than that. He invented them with uh, D and, and uh, 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 Jindai, I think. Um, so, uh, the, the, but they stood there for a while as a curiosity until the U-duality kind of thing started. Um, he had great contributions to the lexicon in physics. So Dirichlet brains or D-brains were his naming of the objects. But he also named orientifolds with limon. There were repulsions and then firewalls. And this is the one that I want to tell you about. He thought that firewalls were a wall of fire. Turns out that if you follow the fire code, the firewall is what prevents a fire from getting through. So, <laughs> so when he was naming it, he thought it was something different. There was another name that was before that, but that didn't catch on. It was these sheets of, I can't remember how they're called. Um, the Bronstein paper had some, some, some name for them. But this is what stuck, because everybody likes to talk about firewalls. Right? And, and many times what he did was basically he had some cool way of generating names for stuff, and they stuck. And, and this was amazing. But you know, this is just a curiosity. Um, he was very generous with his time. If you go to his office, he'll talk to you pretty much all the time. Um, he was very good at challenging his graduate students, and his graduate students, many of them, have gone to very prestigious professorships. Uh, I can think of the top of my head, Rob Lee, uh, Simon Hellerman, there's Maya Magraña, and there's 
many more, and they all did fantastic. He's easy to talk to, and he's very sharp about this, or he was very sharp about physics. Um, and he always gave credit to his collaborators. He was very generous with that as well. So in his, um, when he was retiring, he basically said that he couldn't have done the things he did without the help of all the people that always worked with him. Um, and he loved hiking, bicycling, volleyball, rollerblade, hockey, uh, ultimate frisbee, chess, uh, and he liked to win. I mean, this is... He was competitive, so this is, um, this is the way he was, and we will miss him, and physics uh, will miss Joe very much. And, and, and if anyone wants anything else to say, uh, should come here and tell us all. Thank you.